Rod Hembry is my guest. He is the president of Quick Study TV, a man with uh, great innovative prowess and a good friend. Welcome back to Huntley Prime, Rod. Thank you. You're scaring me with all of that. I'm, I'm afraid now. You're scaring me. <laughs> <Don't be afraid. laughs> In the past, we've talked about Quick Study TV and technology and so on. And, I, and, and when we were discussing it on that occasion, I, I thought, boy, there's so much more you have to do in, in terms of just looking at this universe that we're living in right now. It seems that much of the public uh, perception of televangelism, if we can call it that, is negative. And it goes back to the 20th century where some prominent televangelists were uh, morally uh, weak and fell in a very public way, uh, adding fuel to the fire of those who were anti-God you know, on television. Is some of that stigma still there for those who are doing Christian TV? Of course it is. Uh, the, the problem is that, and really it, they should be, uh, it should be understood that there were some very embarrassing moments. Mm. I think when, when man, and, and throughout the Bible, uh, the Torah, uh, the Tanakh, even the New Testament, Jesus alludes to this, he says, follow me. Anytime you try to create a movement or a ministry after a man or after something temporal, you're going to have problems. And by the way, the same stigma exists even in the entertainment industry, hmm. you know, with others. So many in the entertainment industry saw televangelism as just another form of entertainment. But Jesus Christ, but God said that if, if you stay with my character and present my character, then people will be drawn to my character because God said to Israel so many times, I am the Lord your God. And over 53 times he said, be holy because I am holy. Follow me is the message. Follow me. Follow the patterns that I have set out, which is your purpose. When we don't do that, Jim, when we build schools and name them after ourselves, when we build ministries and say, oh, this is my legacy, we've stepped outside of the realm of any kind of protection, spiritually, theologically, that God has provided. How important is authenticity and relevance uh, today when it comes to the presentation of the gospel? Because the caricature was anything but authentic and relevant, it seems to me. Well, and, and the, the problem you have is God does use weird and strange people. Yeah. Jim, look at the prophets. Yeah. You see, guys were weird, you know. Yeah. Jeremiah tying a loincloth around and then go burying it in a rock. What's yeah. that about? Yeah. Building models of the city of Jerusalem. Must have been crazy, you know. Yeah. Amos, the uh, fig tree uh, caretaker and, the, and the, herd, the herdsman goes and prophesies to northern Israel. Who is this guy? He's a farmer. Yeah. So um, there is this strangeness that God chooses people. John the Baptist is a very strange person. On the other hand, I think what your question relates to is the relevance or the authenticity of the person means we have to stay close to the Word because the Word is relevant. The Bible is relevant. The Bible is the DNA of man's spirit and it is the guidelines. The further we deviate from that, projecting our own ideas, the more strange and irrelevant we will become. Now you've got a doctorate in biblical theology you, and you've gone through the Bible, what, 28 times with quick study, so I mean you've had a lot of exposure to the Scripture. Uh, what is your view of uh, some of the passages in the, uh, the Old Testament that are all about war and killing and slaughter and the wiping out of entire populations uh, and um, the warrior God? How, how do you see that? The, the truth is, and, and the, the, the fact is, that on this side of the cross, we have a different context and a different, uh, a different way of looking at things. Jesus Christ did a number of things. This is the first answer. There's a second part to the answer. First of all, God is a warrior. He is. You look at Revelation 19, and He will rule the nations. God is a warrior. The difference is He's God and not man. So on this side of the cross, Jesus said, vengeance is mine, and Jesus said, Love your enemies, you know, don't kill them. He said, I want, you to be, uh, I want you to be a person who follows me and goes by my values. On the other hand, you look at the Old Testament or the Tanakh and you see all of this going on, there's a couple of things in play. First of all, there is all kinds of demonic infestation, which is corrupting everything. And the Bible says in Genesis 6 that the thoughts of man were continually evil. Imagine living in a culture where babies are sacrificed and burned alive. Singing goes around the pagan altar to, to drown out the cries of the burning baby alive. This is the, the sacrifice to Molech and Chemosh. And God says to Israel, that's got to stop. Get in there and take those priests out. That's got to stop. And so Jesus Christ comes, dies and raises again, and the resurrection gives us the power to take the Holy Spirit in our lives to overcome 
those kinds of spirits. So you've got a different dynamic. And now, Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual principalities. So Jesus took it to another level. We're in a different context now. Yeah. And when you're going through those passages on television, how do you handle them? We tell the truth. Uh, the, first of all, we have, to, we have to speak the passages on this side of the cross. We are on this side of the cross. They call it the age of grace, the period of grace. There's a reason. Mm -hmm. And we teach that the principle is a spiritual principle. There cannot be any idols in your heart. If there are, there's going to be violence in your heart. There's already violence in the human heart. And Jeremiah says that in chapter 17. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? But the truth is that as we give our lives to Jesus Christ and we defeat in our heart now uh, those violent structures, then we can deal with anything on the outside by dealing with first on the inside. That is the idea. Jim, I don't believe in victory parades. I believe war today is a failure of the church. I don't believe any nation should have a victory after a war. I think there should be repentance after war because that means people lost their lives, the sanctity of human life. Yeah, and it's uh, more than passing strains that you'll have uh, two nations fighting against each other, both praying that God will uh, be, be with them and walk with them and, and help them win. The issue is the sanctity of human life and the just war doctrine as you look at it, you know in the early church they had a problem because the centurions were coming to Christ, yet they were fighting for Caesar. So they had to, to develop some kind of way and the idea was that the only reason you would go to war is to stop more killing. If going to war would save more life, then that was a, one, of the, one of the virtues of uh, a just war doctrine. Another one would be the war has to be winnable and not inflict additional punishment and, and suffering on the people. So those, you know, to fight for political means different than fighting to stop killing. You can see, friends, why uh, Quick Study is so popular and why it's so effective. Rod Hembry is uh, the man. He's the president, he's the host, and he's doing a terrific job. Your website is? www.biblediscoverytv.com. Or? If you don't like the Bible, then www.thestreamtv.com. There you go. Thanks for coming our way, Rod. Thank you.